Hi guys, hope you're doing well. Cracking interview tonight with Gary Fold. Not even gonna lie, spent most of it with tears streaming down my face, laughing. Um, really good one. He's the first person that I've had on twice. Um, he's going through a, a really big tour just now. I thought it'd be good to get him back on and get his kind of thoughts on things and where he is now, career-wise, and same with comedy as well. Um, big thanks as always to Paul at Let Me Repair and for Common Youth for the sponsorship of the episode today. If you are on the Common Youth website, if you quote Glasgow Podcast, you get a 20% discount, so go and have a wee look. And thanks as always to Paul at The Green Room. Production's amazing. If you're looking for any kind of podcast stuff, drop my wee messages on Instagram. Let me know what you think, guys, and hit the subscribe button if you can. Cheers. Gary to Gary, do you know something? You're my first ever returning guest. I'm really aye. Aye, and you've been late for both of them. <laughs> yeah, that was only, I was three years, man, mate, so I was, I've improved. I was aye, only three years 20, 20 minutes. 20 that's... minutes, I've got better. Ideal. Um, how you doing? I'm good, mate. Are you one or two hours? We asked us the last Why time, didn't we? Why? Why some of your cousins or something. Aye, you could, some of them You're mean. technically English, mate, because that's English spelling, aye. isn't it? Once you, is... once you reach the pinnacle, then I'll, I'll so, check the blood. That's how you got his back, <laughs> when you're just trying to keep the Garys going. Because Garys are dying out, you know that, did you? Mate, that and Gingers, both gingers? are dying out. You're fucked, mate. End of the year. End of the year. <laughs> I've got a ginger beard, mate. Same, <laughs> same. That's why I keep it this length. I'm dust. <laughs> Last time I spoke to you was, can I, right at the start of COVID, mm -hmm. and by your own admission that day like the shit had hit the fan mm -hmm. with everything your gigs had been cancelled mm -hmm. you'd no work you'd just started your apprenticeship mm -hmm. obviously everything's kind of moving in the right direction now but job wise apprenticeship passed all that now I take I it you're in qualified doing what you're doing. I actually work in the college now that like, you were doing I work the... for the college that done my apprenticeship with that's mental and I, and I look after the funding aspect of it so I do right. the tours of the learning centre but mm -hmm. I look after the funding as well so if somebody, because the course costs seven and a half grand, right? It's called Energy Technical Academy. Get a cheeky wee plug, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> get me a day off. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're looking for a gas course, uh, contact Gary Boy. <laughs> no, but it's a uh, so I so it's quite an expensive thing. So if somebody comes in, they're really keen, and there's the affordability is a, a bad thing if they can't mm -hmm. get finance. It's my job to go and speak to the local council, right? And uh, and and their behalf mm -hmm. and say, listen, I've got a young boy, a young lassie. I'm not even young, if like the the they maybe they're in poverty, this right. this could change their life. So it's a really good job, mate, because I get to look after people that, that I would have been that guy. Aye. My boss didn't get funded, he just gave me the course purely Aye. in the agreement that I mm -hmm. would share my, my progress through the course and it would get and it did it got people come onto the course. Mm -hmm. But it's good that now that I get to not help people, but I get to fight for people who maybe Aye. can't afford it. Did you see yourself getting to this point see like when, when mm. i'd spoke to you back then and you were i never kinda... ever thought i'd do comedy again no up to, maybe up to a year ago just because no, of covid and that or... I, mean, I just because of covid i just thought it's not going to go back because mm -hmm. we done it november i think was when i was like oh it's coming back because we've done the kind of mini tour mm -hmm. um but before that mate up to the, the gigs like up to me being on on the glee stage starring top an audience i was like I don't think this, because it seems like that, didn't it, at the time? Aye. It was like we had a first Aye. lockdown, a second lockdown, fucking third bounce lockdown, whatever they call it, mm -hmm. and it just didn't seem. So that's how the gas was good, because I can go and make a good living Aye. in the gas, enjoy the job, mm -hmm. um, but to be back on stage again, doing big full rooms and, and planning the next steps, Aye. it's just, I, like Paul, the, the guy that records this, is, like, he helps me with all my audio and camera mm -hmm. stuff, and I was saying that to Paul, like, I love it now. Aye. I loved it before, but now it's like when something's been took away for you and, and you get it back, you're like, oh, that's my baby. Give me Aye. You caress it a bit better. And, like it feels lovely being on stage again. I'm I'm positive. I love it. Like I'm not drinking anymore because I want to, I want to embrace everything. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get mad with it and, and forget wee bits and like, I totally love it again. And and I don't think that would have ever happened without COVID. Aye, coming like, in here. Aye, like, I just burnt myself, like, fed up with it, meant done something else. Do you think in that sense, I know we'd spoke before and you'd said like when everything stops, you kinda you need to just sit and think about stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you think that is then what made you kinda reset a wee bit? Well, and... reflection was massive. And I think that's why I was so ready to reset. Right. So if somebody had came to me and says, right, you're never going to gig again, I'd have been all right with it. Aye. Like what I remember of the tour previous to COVID was 
getting mad with it, fucking up my life, blowing my money. Like, so there wasn't really anything other than the love of being on stage. Mm-hmm. So the only thing that kept me going was like meeting people. People cut up to you in the streets, you know, big man, I love uh, your stuff. And me and my mate Raymond were at dinner the night and a guy just stood up and says, can I get a photo of him? We had a wee chat. And uh, like, I love that and I like that. Mm-hmm. And I like the performing, but all this shit that came with it uh, was just a negative that I could happily just lose. Mm-hmm. Um, so the gas engineering was a was a good alter, alter, alternative, um, but I know it's back. That's how I make sure that I'm in a good place. I'm enjoying it, and it gets work. Mm-hmm. It's not the hobby. You go to the stand, you get a pint after you go. It's that's not the enemy. Aye. How do you combine the both? Because obviously your your job's a, a hard job as well, mm-hmm. and it's be hard enough just doing that and then going home with the kids and the wife and that. But mm-hmm. you've got the comedy side as well. But is it easier for you because you love? The comedy and you love the job you're in as well to manage so, both of them so my boss tommy mate is is he's like a fan almost mate he's, mm-hmm. he's brilliant and we sat down before the tour started because obviously i worked here um a few weeks previous to the kind of tour king half and, and he said to me he says what is your let's talk about your balance here because you're going to burn yourself out Aye. and i'm like oh here we go man he's going to say to me now you've no job mm-hmm. pick one that's the kind of i know that he's not like that but he sat me down with a meeting together and he's like right I want to help you. Mm-hmm. I want you to thrive. I want you to go back and do what you love. So I get every Monday and Friday off. Right. Um, and then I work for home the other days. Mm-hmm. But I also go into the college when I can as well. Right. But he's so supportive. So when I finish the gigs, I'll be back into my Energy Technical Academy full time mm-hmm. as of June when the last gig is. Right. I'll be straight back into work. And, and it's not hard. Like, being on the tools is hard. Aye. But the job at Addy is not hard. It's all, it's all in house. I can jump in, watch the courses that are going on, mm-hmm. and chat to the students. And so it's a good job. Aye. Love that. It's no labour demand. It's no like I'm at the new. Then a boiler on the Friday got to do a gig. It mm-hmm. was like that in November. Aye. <laughs> I was Aye. like, then a boiler during the day, go out and then a gig at night. <laughs> um, some mental pub, because November was obviously COVID rules. Aye. So it was all 200 seaters. And Aye. I'm sure Paul might show you some footage one day. I just, it was, it was mayhem. It was, it was mayhem. <laughs> because people had never been out for two years, mate. Aye. And then I come in, I think everybody thought it was a bring your own bottle night. It was like, <laughs> See them in a bevy, it's getting confiscated. It was I started like one of the dialabus. <laughs> it was nuts. But people were just coming out and just getting wrecked. Half of the audience were like up for it, up mm-hmm. for comedy, and half the audience were just like, we've not been out for two years. Freedom. Let's get out of our bin. Aye. So it was it was really tough, mate, as a comedian to go on stage and perform to like people that are wrecked. Aye. Do you still get nervous? Aye, mate. Before I'm, it. I'm rattled with nervous, man. Aye. I'm crippled. But when I get to the stage, I think we said this the last time and I when I get to the stage, see when you do your first joke, mm-hmm. everything just goes. Aye. It's almost like maybe when somebody takes an ecky, there's Aye. that euphoric feeling, but everything feels I mean, like it's weird. It's it's hard to explain. There's a is it euphoria you would call it? Mm-hmm. There's a there's a weird sensation. I don't know if bands get this as well, but when you're on stage, you just you're out your zone. Aye. It's like an out of body experience. It's almost if you're watching yourself. Aye. Um, but when I'm performing, I feel like I'm watching what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Bizarre, but. That's that's what like the drug element of comedy. That's what you enjoy. Ah, uh, you want to go back. That's for the it buzz. Again. Aye, that's uh, the yeah. adrenaline. So when I done, I done the Amadillo and I done two in the one day. Like, see, he came off stage after that mm-hmm. crash, and then dragged myself back on and come back on with the same energy. Mate, it just fried my head. Aye, uh, like I loved it, and and people got the right show, a balanced mm-hmm. show, but like I couldn't do that again. Just took a lot out of you. Like a double done, we would call uh, it. Uh, it if you were to uh, the uh, drug. Um, that's what it felt like. But I, it's the, the euphoria side of comedy is just frightening. It must have been good though, in the sense <clears> of <throat> were you thinking during COVID it was away, but oh, then you're going back out and to the, it was gone. the uh, Armadillo so and you've got sellout crowds there so waiting this, on you. This, even November, I was like, fuck me, like, I can't do this. Aye. I can't go into wee pubs again because it's like, not that I don't enjoy it, I love the people, mm-hmm. but everybody was just steaming and it was like, I wasn't enjoying it. Aye. I'm like, fuck me, I've waited two years, man, came back to gigs and there's five guys at a gig just wrecked and they're ruining it aye. for everybody. And, and you're like, I'm not just thinking about me, I'm thinking about the, because when I do stand up, I want it to be an experience. Mm-hmm. I want people to come to the gig and go, oh, I, I could come to your gig and forget about all my worries for an hour. Aye. I That's just what you want. Laugh. I don't want people to come to a gig and there's five wee guys just out their bin because aye. of their control. Mm-hmm. So it, it was a big, big struggle. But I think because of like the thought, like meeting people all the time in the street kept me going. It was like, mm-hmm. oh, People do want to see me. People do want to come back out. And this tour's been amazing, mate. Aye. Crowds have been beautiful. People have been staying back after gigs and seeing me. Because like, that's the thing I do. After every gig, I stay back and meet everybody. Aye. And the queues have been, like, Paul will tell you, the queues have been massive, mate. People just stay back to get a hug or high five or a photo. Like, 
DJ Wee Buzz though, didn't that's it? What, that's what I like it for. Aye. I like the people, mate, more than the, the money's amazing, but mm-hmm. the, the people is the good aspect to it. Aye. That's what you enjoy. You enjoy meeting people, and it's like, if, if you do something good at work, and somebody comes and says to you, oh, big man, well done, good job. Aye. Like, I've got that times thousands, like, every day people stop me. Oh, we love your stuff. Aye. And you just love these people, mate. I'm just like, fuck me, like. The problem is you need um, lights. Because I suppose from your point of view, you're just trying to put out something that people mm-hmm. like, and you're probably your own worst critic mm-hmm. when you're looking at stuff like that but you've got that recognition for thousands of folk mm-hmm. just see because i remember the last time there was like day. folk driving by in vans and all mm-hmm. that just shouting I still the same mate see like see, see if i have a video mate people see like whatever the video is like so i bought the tracky Aye. the other day and i done a video yesterday was it about ha- having a tracky and it's the first time I bought a tracky in years, mate. Aye. And I'm walking down the street and a, a guy's hanging out a van. He's like, big man, your tracky's a belter. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't get that anywhere else. And people look about like, why is this wee fat guy getting a comment with a tracky of a random worky? They probably think the worky's just taking the mickey, but you, it, like, people just empower you so much. And I think why, why my journey's like, I enjoy it so much. It's because I'm constantly empowering people. People stop me in Tesco, love your stuff. I hope you're well, big man. You're doing brilliant. Even during COVID, keep mm-hmm. going. People encouraging you, mate. The shop, like, Keep going back, man. You're going stage in a few months. Aye. Keep keep pushing. And if it wasn't for that aspect of comedy, mate, I wouldn't enjoy it. Aye. Because the gigs are fucking terrifying. It's good when you go on the, on the stage, but mm-hmm. you're, you're putting yourself, you're trying to sell tickets. The gigs are horrific, the build up to them. Aye. It's just on the stage with people and then meeting people is the good bits. Does it but does it matter if you're playing to like ten people or five thousand? Is in the same nerve still there or Aye. is it worse when does, the bigger it doesn't matter? I actually like bigger rooms now. Aye. Before it was the opposite. Mm-hmm. Because before before COVID was the first kind of big tour that we had done. Aye. Before that, we were still doing like a wee pub at 200, a 500 seat of theatre, a pub Aye. at 300, a 200 seat of theatre. But this year's been like a big, massive tour. Right. And I enjoy the bigger rooms better because mm-hmm. you've got everybody's involved. This Aye. Such, it's more lively. Aye. Um, well, you and me, mate, I'd crumble. <laughs> I, I feel like, like I'm that. going to crumble, mate. Uh, I feel like I'm going to crumble. But, but there's, I'm honestly like, the, the armadillo, I was just pacing up and down. Aye. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, <laughs> I don't deserve to be here. Like, fucking run, big man. <laughs> Even during the show, because we spoke about that no, before. No, like, during the show, during the show, mate, I'm, going, I'm having a fucking out-of-body experience. Aye. I like, feel like a fat Jesus, mate. Like, I'm <laughs> I'm looking at myself in a camera. It's, mate, it's, it's, so, it's so weird to explain. I was actually talking about it yesterday, and actually I'm talking about it fresh in my head. It's hard to explain. Aye. It's like an out-of-body experience, I feel like, when I'm then me faces movements i feel like i'm watching myself Aye. like i'm i'm like right big man do this movement next day that next it's bizarre it's a bizarre thing to say <laughs> i don't know if i'm having some sort of fucking mental breakdown <laughs> or, it, or it's that fine like i need to ask other comedians but when i'm performing i'm always conscious of what i'm saying what i'm doing but faces Aye. i'm doing movements i'm doing or maybe that's just because i've i've grew to love this more than mm-hmm. i ever have before Aye. and i care enough to go right let's put a fucking good show on Aye. Like, let's bounce out here and make people want to come back and people have a good night people forget about their fucking mm-hmm. life Aye. um for, for the hour and, and stand Aye, up that, that you're there now and the whole we spoke before for ages about the whole imposter syndrome thing mm-hmm. Is that still a constant, bigger part oh, constant, for you? Man. Ah, yeah. i find that mental mate like, you're, you're when everywhere is, when is this gone like even, like, even new it's it's no as much ah, it's hard to explain it's no as bad as originally with me with this book because mm-hmm. i'd only done one big tour Aye. so it was like oh that's it i fucked it no like, covid's going to ruin everything Aye. but i think now that i've had a second chance mm-hmm. i'm like i can't believe people gave me a second chance <laughs> we're, we're talking about the next tour now and but i i think anybody we, I, I don't see myself as like I'm no fucking Tony Robbins. I'm not successful, but mm-hmm. I make a I make a living out of comedy. If Aye. I did, if I done gas faulty, I'd be a gas engineer. Aye. But I think anybody that's had any sort of success in any working environment in their mm-hmm. life must feel impost- imposter Aye. syndrome. They must get it. Like if you don't get it, there must be something wrong with you. Aye. Like, Just dead inside. Aye. <laughs> if you're a millionaire and you're for this game, you wouldn't feel like a millionaire. And your bank says Aye. you're a millionaire, but Aye. in your head you're like, oh, that money's going to go anytime. Aye. Going to get my door kicked mm-hmm. in at some point. So I, I feel like I've been like a lottery. I've won. Mm-hmm. I've won a career and I don't feel like I've, I've earned a career and I think that's where the, the different aspect Aye. it comes. How do you cope with that side of it now? Because see with the, when you've done your first tour and mm-hmm. like the money and all that and you kind of went thing with it, you've still got all the things there, but how do you manage that better now? It just a good accountant, mate. Aye. Good people running about me. I feel like my team this year is the best it's ever been. Aye. Like I've got Paul, Paul does the cameras, the audio, he's a fucking therapist as well, so... Paul's a good foundation to have. My support act, Chrissy's a, a good boy. Mm-hmm. 
my, my agent's decent as well. So I've I've got a good team about me. Right. And I think that's how it's different now. Right. Because I, I've, I've gone into this where we are support network. Mm-hmm. Before it was obviously still some of the same people, but before it was more like, let's go make money, let's get fuck. Right. Um, but now that I feel like I'm I'm, I'm built different now, mate. I feel mm-hmm. like the people around about me are just, they're good encouragers, mate. They're all good people. They've got, individually, they've got their own good aspects that Aye. that I get to benefit from. Mm-hmm. So I feel when I go on stage, I'm I'm in a better place. Aye. And purely down to the team, mate. It's not just, like when I go on stage and I'm funny for an hour, maybe that's me being funny, but there's, there's a build up to that event. There's people mm-hmm. setting cameras up, catching audio, my support acts going out and the room up, my agents booking the gig, make sure the lights go on. Like, mm-hmm. So there's, I kind of seen that different now. Aye. There's a better, I appreciate them more mm-hmm. than I would have before. Aye, the first time. Aye, so I feel like it's a team event. It's not just me anymore. Mm-hmm. Before it was up here, I was getting a bit, I spoke to that before me, I was getting a bit daft in my head. Aye. It was killing me a wee bit. And I'm like, but now I see it. It's, it's Gary Falls and the, the poster, but mm-hmm. it's us. Let's, Aye, let's go as a team. team I charge up in the motor. Mm-hmm. Tell mad stories and mad stories on the way back, like farts in a jar and all that. Like, <laughs> some of the chats we have, and I think <laughs> Paul laughing, man. Like, we can't talk about the farts in a jar, man. But it's like, I go up, I mean, we go up, the boys know me, like, they know I'm anxious, they know I'm a, like, I'm, I'm up and down, I'm snappy. I'm not snappy, I'm not a dick. Hopefully, I'm not a dick, but like, I'm a bit irate and I'm panicked. And, Aye. But after the gig, I'm just kind of winding down and it's good, man, because mm-hmm. a good chat on the way back. Aye. There wasn't that, the, the last time it would be like, um, so the difference, sorry, I'm jumping about, the no, difference for the last tours we've done is we would do two gigs a month, mm-hmm. a Friday and a Saturday, different weekends, and then wait a month to the next gig. Right. But now it's like every Friday, Saturday, back to back, just constant. Mm-hmm. It's a proper tour now. And I think that's better for me. Because like after the gigs, we, we all talk about the gig. Mm-hmm. Like, we'll be like, how did you think you dealt with that heckler? Or how did you, that material was good or mm-hmm. that, but wasn't that good? So I'm constantly just being, it's like a boost all the time. Right. Like for Friday, I'm like, right, I'm doing this, I'm writing this material. So I, whatever's changed this year has been amazing. Mm-hmm. And I think it's the team, the team right. is brilliant in it. Love that. Mm-hmm. Love that. I wanted to ask you, obviously the whole comedy world, mm-hmm. it's fair to say the last 18, 24 months has changed mm-hmm. massively. You've had the kind of, the whole cancel culture for a lot mm-hmm. of comedians have just kind of fell by the wayside. Mm-hmm. How do you find that for your point of view? Because you're in that, you're in that industry and you, you've probably my, seen I people. I to my granny. Aye. That's my rule. <clears throat> my granny's in every room. Mm-hmm. And my granny's not a racist, so I don't do racist material. Aye. My granny's dead, right? So she'll know here that I'm saying anyway, but that's in my head, that's what I try and write like. Aye. I try and write my granny's here. Like, I don't want to, but, I mean, there's some shagging stories, but my granny was a dirty <laughs> and all. She'd have loved it, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Should have been sliding that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> My granny was a stripper. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> fuck's sake. But you can't, um, like, I just don't, I just try not to offend anybody. It's Aye. not a hard thing to do, man. See, if you want to be an offensive comedian and you want to go and do fucking homophobic or racist material, like, that's what you do. Mm-hmm. I don't want to, I, I don't want anybody to come to my gig and Aye. feel like excluded. Aye. Um, so I just I don't focus too much cancel culture sometimes mm-hmm. I might say something about fucking mental like to a, like dealing with a heckler Aye. Um, but no, no misogyny no racism no fucking anything no isms just mm-hmm. try and not have an ism <laughs> it's no hard mate like you, when, you, when you go to Tesco and be fucking racist because you're not on stage like, Aye. Um, so I, I, I get some jokes can be offensive mm-hmm. being offensive and, and getting cancelled should be two different things Aye. you're offensive you're offensive Aye. Fucking, t- you're at a comedy club take a joke Aye. if you go and see a comedian who's offensive you, I don't get people that complain about that mm-hmm. you're fucking bonkers you're mentally ill if you go to a, if you go to a, like a boil or a, a Jimmy Carlin get offended Aye. If you come and see me I'm not that kind of comedian I'm, I'm talking about my family I'm talking about I'm a storyteller Aye. my journey you won't Aye. get anything like that so I, maybe I don't understand it right, and I can't really call it. I can't talk on behalf of other comedians, but I just try not be racist, try not be Aye. homophobic, try not be fucking misogynistic. Aye. It's not hard for me. Um, I can't believe you linked that question in your granny there. That's my granny was a heavy dirty man. We genie. <laughs> we genie the meanie. <laughs> <laughs> seen, that was a, seen as a wee guy, man. I remember a fun adult, though, it was horrific. <laughs> Like imagine like in school, uh, my granny's got this big massive wally, it's about that size like when you're a wee guy your horns are tiny, you know what I was holding <laughs> Me and my wee cousin just smashed each other with us. 
And uh, I, I said, I was telling people that I figured, oh man, it was horrible. Like, people like that. <laughs> <laughs> my nana's not coughing, mate, but I stopped telling me that. Like, do you know, I found a dildo, it was a belter. And we found the wee, see, my, remember the dirty care just to get? Aye. Like, my granda must have been horny as fuck, man. It was like, <laughs> my granda was dead for years, probably his willy, just plasticated, I don't know. But I was crazy. <laughs> But proper funny family, mate, and I think that's how my sense of humour's like that. Aye, that's all. You've always got stories. There's Nuts, always mate. something. It's the, the, like, I'm not the funniest person in my family. I'm at my death. See at a funeral. Like, see me have a funeral, mate. It's, right. it's a get together. It's nobody's dead. <laughs> like, and I like that. I, like, I'm terrified of death, but I'm always like, it's going to be horrific when I die. Aye. Um, but it, it's going to be a good funeral, man. Like, it's going to be good fun. <laughs> like, I'll be in the fucking box anyway. <laughs> but... They're just it's such a good family, man. And like even my family will watch that and they won't get offended. Aye. Because my granny was a fucking man. Okay, she was brilliant. <laughs> She'd be loving it, know what I mean? <laughs> so I'd be bashed up for my dildo. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, but I just being uh, I've always had funny people in about me, mate. So Which is good though, because I suppose it mm -hmm. the way you do things and you, you do tell stories, you're always getting in, in my family, time. mate, you need to fight for attention. Aye. See when you were away, mate. Mm -hmm. if, if you weren't loud, you weren't heard. Aye. You were, if, if my granny couldn't hear you, mate. You weren't get a tap of squishy cream. Know what I mean? Like you had to be the loud one. That. <laughs> wait, I dream about that stuff, man. <laughs> but as like so as I went, I was like that. Aye. And then I joined the army, and it was the same. Like if, mm -hmm. if you weren't at the front, you wouldn't get the good jobs. Aye. Like on a, on a Monday, your sergeant major comes in with a clipboard, and he's like, right, who wants to do this, this, or this? Like I was always like me volunteering. And sometimes you end up fucking stupid courses. So mm -hmm. my whole life, I've always strived to be at the front. No, no, the successful one, but be the attention. Like, look Aye. at me. So I think that's how comedy done so well. Because I was just scared to do a live <clears> video. <throat> if I'd done a gig at the stand, I, I would always hold flyers, mm -hmm. even before the Facebook stuff. Aye. I always done Glasgow Comedy Festival, a solo show there. Mm -hmm. And I always had flyers for that all year. If I had a good gig at the stand, Aye. I was standing outside and flying everybody. Right. And they, people, other communities might be like, oh, that's a brass neck. Like, mm -hmm. fucking calm down. You're no Kevin Bridges kind of thing. But Aye. for me, it was always a vision, like, make myself known. Like, Aye. I used to wear a t-shirt. I get slagged for that. I used to wear a t-shirt that says Gary Folds. Just a black t-shirt with white writing, Gary Falls, just so that people would, because people never seen a comedy club, mate. People never see you. Aye. They don't have a fucking clue who you are. But if they think you're funny, they'll pick up the phone and take a picture. Aye. Your fucking names on your t-shirt, you know what I mean? Like, Aye. there's that fat guy's name, Gary or something. There's <laughs> not many Garys. Gary Little, Gary Meikle, Gary Folds, and I'm the chubby Aye. one. So, Aye. Gary Little's terrifying and sexy. Gary Meikle's like a supermodel, and I'm just a <laughs> fat potato disaster, man. Like, just a mashed totty with fucking freckles, mate. But I'm easy to pick out, and I think that's the, the, the whole attention aspect is like, Aye. I'm, I'm not ashamed to to get myself in front of everybody, like I'll do it for attention. Like, I suppose as well though, it's, it's a job, mm. isn't it? You've got to get yourself out it's there. And... You've got to, but I mean, it's the only job you have to be a fucking attention seeker. Aye, 100%. Mm. Who do you like comedy wise? Who do you watch? Yep, yes, Bridges, Bridges, Connolly, um, Johnny Vegas, I love. I absolutely adore Johnny Vegas. I like the mentalness about him, mate. Aye. I like Robin Williams when he done his stand up, mm -hmm. especially the one he done in America. Uh, sorry, in Iraq. Aye. And he's stunned in Iraq and he's talking to the troops. And then the, the bugle call goes and all the troops are faced the other way. And it's just because they're facing the flag. And he's stood on the stage and he's like, what the fuck's going on here? Like, you can just see the fear in his face. Like, why is all the soldiers all facing that way? And that's the kind of story. But I would have loved to have seen him. But I, Bridges Connolly, Johnny Vegas, Robin Williams, Jimmy Carr, normal stuff. Aye. I don't. I don't like MD Spicy or MD Fancy. Aye. I like the big bear guy in um, Netflix. Aye. That story's Aye. brilliant, mate. It's one of my favourite stories. Do you think Connolly's the kind of best one that came out of Scotland? Aye. Connolly and Bridges will be the two, probably. Aye. Really ability, mate. Nebdo be as reliable as Bridges. Aye. You know, he's, like, every time I'm like, fuck, I think he's joking. I'm like, fuck me, who's right? He's done that. Like, <laughs> BMI, fuck, he's done that. Like, he's just so relatable, and I don't know how he's just a good writer, mate. Aye. Battles in. That'll be but you I'm soon. I'm a storyteller. I talk about my life. Right. So I think that's how I'm a bit different. Like, you're not going to see the same stuff after me. Aye. I'm talking about the year before. So I'll talk, then I'm talking about COVID. Mm -hmm. And next year I'll be talking about going back on this tour, whatever comes this year, mm -hmm. personally. And do you ever get folk on, <clears throat> I know you're on socials a lot, when you're talking about stories and that, do you ever get folk that go, fucking hell, that couldn't have happened? Mm -hmm. Like, there's no way that could have I happened. Try no, I'm trying not to say stuff that's like that. Aye. I try no bad for in between us. Aye. Aye. People call that bullshit out, man. Aye. It's Glasgow, mate, isn't it? <laughs> but not Didney. That's what you'll get, mate. Didney Ham. Like, if people say that, mate, like... Do you, you still enjoy it? the social media side of it? Ah, 
it's all right, no mate. The assholes <laughs> just give a lock to me. They just Aye. go fucking tatty bye bye. You know what I mean? They're off. I don't entertain. I used to argue with them that, and then I, I realised that I would feel negative. Ah, you get it. Or I would slaughter them. Then my whole crowd would jump up, slaughter them. Then mm-hmm. I'm like, I, I like, I like kind of being. I'm no, I'm no fucking ambassador, but I like being somebody that is open about mental health. Mm-hmm. And if if I'm jumping on something, getting them, getting them at stinking, mm-hmm. and then my, my wee gang of followers are getting them at stinking, like Aye. I'm against it and I believe in. Aye. So I just block them and get them to fuck. Aye. Aye. Just don't give me entertainment. Fuck them. Get them out of there. You're going to get it. TikTok's worse, man. TikTok's fucking horrific. Aye. I've, I've only been on it a few months, man, and it's toxic. Aye, it's fucking it's bad, mate. Carnage. Have you said on that? It's unreal. Just for... I just laughing. Just for posting like, shit. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> it's, it's mental the folk Aye. that just... You could literally post yourself sitting doing mm. nothing and somebody would find Aye. something to fucking... I used to... When I, when I first done the live videos back in the days, man, people would pick up my RTX was. So like stuff like, like call that. you on it. Ah, you like Fuck like state his was not that state his fingernails like. So see, I'm taking a picture. I bite my nails. I hide my horns when I get pictures now. Oh, because they're not. Aye, because I'm like cuts <laughs> zoom in at my fingernails like pure weird stuff for that, but. I wish I didn't give a fuck. Watch this polo zoom in at my fingernails now. <laughs> <laughs> Be fat guy with weird fingernails. <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> oh, I, man. It's, it, it can be brutal, but no, I'm just at a point. I'm doing what I love. I'm surrounded with people that I love. I don't give a fuck, man. Aye. Like, some doesn't like me, they like me. Move on. Go and fucking argue with somebody else. Aye. What do you do? See you outside mm. comedy and work and that. What do you do to switch off and... Can I chill? Spend time in the mains, man. Aye. Aye, it takes. I'm too anxious worrying about anything about else. Aye. Too anxious chasing my books or smashing up the fucking house, man. Like, <laughs> oh, mental. I took up my soft play all day and I was just like, man, my veins are going to die in soft play, man. They're just fucking <laughs> diving down shoots head first. Like, you can't even think about anything else. But, aye, walking's brilliant. Aye. Walking's been a, a lease of life. I know I don't like a walk, but mm-hmm. I do, man. I like walking. <laughs> 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 like a wee, a wee five metre strolling in again. <laughs> the Fitbit, man. Fitbit's amazing. Bad for anxiety. Get the steps in. No, it's sponsored by Apple. Um, but you can do like, you can check your blood, o- your blood oxygen. You can do an ECG. Like, oh, it's mental, mate. That would panic. freak me out. I can't even deal with that. Panic. I had a panic attack. I said that to Paul last time. And I'm, I seen it. I had an ECG thing. And I'm like, I'm going to, and I tapped in it, man. It's telling me I've got an irregular heartbeat. <laughs> so I've done about five ECGs. So four were all right. Four were like, your heart's fine. And the one, it was like irregular. Probably because I was shaking. I convinced myself I had a fucking irregular heartbeat and I was going to die. But <laughs> um, it's good. I just, better balance. I get, like, I eat like fuck, man. But I go and do personal training three days, right. three days a week. And then just walk as well. So I'm active, but I'm mm-hmm. I'm still eating as much shit right. as I do. And do the kids watch any of your stuff like i know you've got an older daughter my, my oldest last year came to the armadillo the no, other one just I got weeks ago boyfriend, mate, she I think was fucking I, I don't know man she enjoyed it <laughs> but there's a man this set where i'm talking about like shagging my wife and i was just in my head i'm like don't do this in front of your brain man but it's like 10 minutes in my set and i'm like fuck me and i came off and she was just like that was good dad <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, and I say to her before that like do not come but she's like no I don't but doesn't it she's we're that kind of family mate we've all got a sense of humor Aye. so there's no she's nearly 17 mate so and she's got a boyfriend you know what I mean like I think he was more embarrassed than anything <laughs> his father-in-law doing a shagging story for 15 minutes <laughs> <laughs> but, but I hope I think it was because of the armadillo she wanted to show him he's 17 so she wanted to show him or that so it might never happen again mm-hmm. I say that to them all the time like enjoy it while it lasts Aye. And it's good because see my wings, mate, they're conditioned to like give people time as well. Mm-hmm. So see, see when I first started to get noticed, the wings would roll their eyes and get annoyed because people were stopping me all the time. Aye. But I would say to the wings, like, remember these are the people that let us go and do phenomenal things. Mm-hmm. These are the people that let us go and fucking go to Kretara for a week. Let, let us go and fucking have nice meals. Mm-hmm. So I've taught them, mate, to be very Aye. appreciative of people stopping us. Mm-hmm. And it's hard Aye. as well because I suppose they just see you that's I'm just a fat da. They're this somebody's taking aye. time away for you with aye, them. Do you know what I mean? Like a toy shop, but now, now they're, they're disciplined enough. They'll just start and they'll wait and they'll say hello and be polite. But aye, as you say though, it's how you teach them. Like these people are. If somebody's talking to you for a picture, it takes aye. it takes fucking three minutes for a picture. And a quick chat, and it's impact that it has on that person. Ah, it's nice. The nice like that guy me and Raymond in the restaurant is like generally buzzing, and I'm like, I can't believe he's buzzing to see me. Like aye. I still get like that all the time. Aye. But it's lovely. Hundred nice. percent, mate. It just shows you how popular mm-hmm. you're. But when you're out about, it's mad, mate. It's mad. Just pick your restaurants. That's you. you eat for life. Ah, freebie, mate. I wish I got the lobster, new man. 
my pal Raymond's a mad freak. I'm like, burgers, know what I mean? I'm like, go on, you eat the like, steak. I was going to pay for it or not. It's like, it's my, it's a mate day, it's my time to pay. He's getting the tickets for the night. And, uh, and the guy, Ryan, then's like, ah, don't worry about it. It's fine. You share our stuff on social media and that. And you get that. It's lovely, mate. It's fucking so nice that they get a meal for free. Aye. But the back of my head, as much as I was like, thank you very much, I was like, ah, bastards fucking eating a burger. And I could have got a tomahawk steak. <laughs> Beside the scallops and lobster and fucking <laughs> <laughs> a glass of expensive bread, you know what I mean? Take him back around tomorrow. People never ever tell you, mate. And listen, if you want to give me a freebie, fucking fire in, I love it. And, I, and I'll share your page and all that. But go and tell me first so I can rip a hole at the menu, man. <laughs> like, you want to know, go and know, leave it to the end. Because it, it guts me, man. I'm like, I could have went Todd to you know I mean, Because I'm, I'm paying the night, I'm like, I better take it easy and get the shitey sirloin steak. But if I had known that dude was going to give it for nothing, man, I would have got fucking the ribeye at least. Just clarify that before you start, Neil. Uh, like, ah, yeah, is this going to be my pain for this? Imagine what? being that arrogant, like, is this free or is it? I couldn't be like that, man. But nobody's ever says me, big man, this is on the house. Because I would, I would go nuts, man. I'd be getting like three starters. I wouldn't even fight them, I'd go myself. <laughs> I'd want that table space to myself, man. <laughs> oh, man. So, tour so far, what's been a high point for you? Uh, I've written, mate. I just love it every gig. The, the, my my favourite thing about the tour then is the, the journey on the way back with him, man. That Paul, see the stories, man. He's some been, stories, but it's been happening. Oh, man, I can't tell you stories, mate. He will get sued to death, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's been in dungeons he's bought farts in a jar like <laughs> there's so much man we can't talk about but it's good because see after the gig like, I'm having a crash because like, the adrenaline see, see being on stage in front of people mate I'm buzzing mate about being there and even more so now that I'm not drinking and like, I genuinely want to be there Aye. like I did before as well but now I'm like fuck I'm, I'm, I'm buzzing like mm -hmm. fucking and I'm saying to people at the gig like thanks for coming thanks for coming Aye. 500 people, thanks for coming, thanks for coming. <laughs> like, I'm I'm loving it. But after I came off the stage and, and I've done the meet and greet, my adrenaline just crashes because it's like, oh, that might be the last time. Because of COVID, I'm triggered mm -hmm. a wee bit. Aye. But the journey's the way back, man. Just Paul just hits up with stuff. I can't <laughs> tell you, man. <laughs> He's worrying in the corner like, right like now. What kind of audience is this? This is, say what you want, mate. Is it? Aye. Aye. Right, so. It's not for but, kids, put it that way. So <laughs> I, I might cancel people, right? It's my first can sculpture. <laughs> but so his powers get a lass here. Uh, oro, is that what you call it? Is that what you call it? Like it? <laughs> she call it like it oro, right? I don't want to say like it, right? His pal was getting a lassie oro and she farted. And the boy says, I feel like I'm just too enjoy us now. <laughs> enjoy her fanny. And it was, I know it's misogynistic, but see that kind of chat, man. We're just like, I'm driving, falling asleep, man. I hear that and I'm just like, fuck me, man. Like, that is the standard that comes with that boy and it's brilliant. But I couldn't do that kind of chat. You know what I mean? That couldn't be my chat. Like, <laughs> my wee granny be rolling about in heaven, my wee dildo. That's fucking shocking behaviour, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, man. My wee granny's up there riding Hugh Hefner as we speak, man. <laughs> um, but I, it's, it's uh, the, just, just the tour in general, mate. Just, I've got a good team. I'm in front of good people, like, on, in the crowds. I'm just loving it, mate. I couldn't, I couldn't individually pick out a good venue or a... But a good crowd, mate. Aye. Everybody's just been playing a part, man. Crowds have been phenomenal, engaging, no shouting out. Like you had any mad show. heckles? No, because I spoke to you before. <clears throat> this story's no fucking. Issue. This story's rent free in my head. Mm -hmm. When I asked you before, <laughs> you said it was a wee fat win mm -hmm. at a Christmas hang or something. Oh, it's brutal, mate. So it I was at the stand. <laughs> the Christmas gig at the stand, <laughs> mate. See, see the the kids' gigs, mate. They were worse than anything. <laughs> Just thought of me dicks for the scheme, got a free day out, man, coming heckle fuck at our West End comedians. And I would get fired on it to start to deal with them all, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, aye, but there's, there's nothing, there never is, mate. There's, there, there, there never is an issue with heckle. Somebody heckles, mate. My rule is, if you heckle and you're funny, aye. well, let's play. Mm -hmm. If if you're steaming and just going, blah, 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 we'll get you spoke to. I don't like throwing people out, mate. Aye. I don't, I've got a rule, mate, where I'll say to school to do not throw anybody out mm -hmm. unless they've been fucking, they're ruining it for everybody else. Aye. Um, if you're just chanting through the show, you get fucked right out. We've not had that. Oh, actually, we did. With, uh, who was it, Paul? Sterling? Falkirk? Falkirk? A wee guy got through it. Just been too steaming and they fucked him out. And we did cut the fire alarm the way out. <laughs> so when I was on stage, it was like, boo, 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 boo. And I'm like, is that a fire alarm? Security's like, no. And I'm like, I can hear a fucking alarm. Is, is it just me? You can hear that bow, bow in my head. And it's like, so that, that's about it, mate. Just that wee guy being a wee fanny, but. <laughs> security wrestled them mate and tossed them out no I mean you guys probably but that's it mate there's, there's never is mate the, my crowd are really good aye 
they're a, they're a really respectful crowd other than coming out of COVID but I was like that mate when I had my first drink I was fucking steaming straight away nobody was aye mate so I was so I get it so see in November it wasn't I was going oh I'm too good for this because I'm aye. not like that mate I'm, I'm far from that mm-hmm. I was like people are just getting just adjusting to being back out in the town aye. again like who, my first night out was fucking after that tour man I was fucked mate aye. Like, I think I went to four pubs man I was gone just so walk up inside the buffer bin, man. Like, that was the best <laughs> night of my life. It's fucking two pints, know what I mean? <laughs> but before, like, two pints got me started before I left the house, so... I get it, mate. I get people, but this this year, mate, they've been brilliant. Aye. They're always good crowds, mate. They're all, that's how I enjoy doing it. And it's good that they've stuck with you through COVID and all that, and they've still been out the other they're, side they're waiting a, for you to start again. They're a bunch, mate. People that have kept their tickets through the whole of COVID. Mm-hmm. I mean, for me, as you know, the start of COVID wasn't good. The homelessness and stuff, so... 40 pound or 20 pound a ticket. If two people, 40 pound a ticket. That was a lot of money, Aye. mate. Aye. I would have whipped that back, mate. There's, mm-hmm. there's probably, I can tell you, a thousand scenarios where I'd have been like, 40 quid there, give me it back. Aye. I need it, I need to buy shopping. So even more so now with the fuel prices. But mm-hmm. the, the fact people just went, no, that's that's for Gary. They, they, some people took it back and I get that. Mm-hmm. I, I understand that. But they probably lost about 4%. Aye, which... Which is mental. It's not a lot in COVID. We, kind of. we were talking to Ticketmaster and people like that and they were saying, oh, you're looking at 30, 40% Aye. At every time you cancel a show. Mm-hmm. Mate, we were never near that. So see, that that's what kept me going. Aye. That if I didn't have that, see if the gigs were cancelled, I would I'd probably wouldn't have stopped comedy again. Do you think so? No, Just I, I might have went back to it eventually. Aye. But not like the, the level we're at the now. Mm-hmm. I couldn't have stopped to it. But the fact that people kept their tickets meant that I had to go on stage, meant Aye. that I had to keep performing, and it meant that I had to keep focusing on going backstage. Aye. But if people didn't keep their tickets, mate, that would never have mm-hmm. landed. And I think it's, I think a lot of people see you as, as genuine as well mm-hmm. because you don't, there's no airs of graces, you, mm-hmm. you say what, what's on your mind. It's but, dick for the scheme, man. Aye, it's, but see, Aye. The, see the whole homelessness thing, obviously, that, that raised a lot of eyebrows for people because mm-hmm. at that point, they're, as they would be about any of like, oh, he must be minted. Mm-hmm. How, how is he homeless? But see, when you look back on it, how do you feel about that whole kind of period? I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a pure life lesson in finances, Aye. first and foremost. Like being terrible with finances, that's how I was homeless. Aye. See if I, if I, I mean, I, I still ended up homeless because I couldn't go and work. They could have, uh, my other job for comedy would then would have been a lorry driver Aye. in the warehouses Aye. were all shut. So. I don't think I could have avoided homelessness. Mm-hmm. I mean, if it wasn't for COVID, my ma being a carer, but I had my ma's house. Aye. I bet my wee boys got asthma and stuff, so that wasn't an option. It was like, you need to get your own place mm-hmm. if you want to see the veins. No, not that aggressive, but that was the chat. Aye. Um, but now my finances are better. Everything Aye. comes in as a percentage, just gets put away for the accountants. Mm-hmm. I've got a better accountant now, mate. Susie, she's phenomenal. And she'll phone me up and say, right, we need this in the account. You need to spend this. Like, mm-hmm. So it's uh, good. Aye. Love that, that's it. Just life, like you just you reflect a big. That's what COVID was for everybody. I think. Regardless if it was good or bad, you sit and reflect. Aye. People walk for home now. People enjoy walking for home now. Aye. So you, there's a lot of reflection. I think for me that was a big thing. The reflection was like, you need to get a grip of your finances. You need to stop being like I've treated myself with dating new shoes and a nice wee jacket. Aye. I very rarely do that. Aye. I, st- I still wear Tesco clays and I enjoy that, but there's an aspect now that I'm like fuck you better wait don't start going daft put money away aye put money away for the rains for a holiday like mm-hmm. so that's that's new aye now, before it was just like give me money let's go mad aye just let's spend let's go it. buy a fucking 95 inch Costco telly and I've not got a fucking <laughs> my room's 85 inches not what I mean just <laughs> <laughs> watch that telly sideways not what I mean but at long ways sit like that but um, I just, there's a, a, a big learning curve, mate, came from COVID, and I'm glad that I've still got it in me. Aye. Even like stage, I don't booze when I gig. Mm-hmm. I mean, bottles of water through the whole thing. Do you know what's the difference, but when oh, you're I, no drinking? Oh, I love it, man. <clears throat> I enjoy it better. Because I can come off and I can chat to my team and say, right, how was that? Mm-hmm. That was good, that was shite. Aye. Then we could talk about what was good, what was shite. Mm-hmm. Um, but before, they'd been like, pints, oh, let's get a pint, let's go to the pub. And Aye. I missed all that. Mm-hmm. So I think that's how I'm getting better and better as a gig now, mm-hmm. because I've got. I'm sober. Aye. I'm not getting full of daftness. I mean, I like to get stoned. That's my mm-hmm. that's my end of tour thing. I like to Aye. get stoned by night and fucking eat cookies or something. <laughs> but that's me just a wee reward. Aye. And I'm, Aye, I experiment see if it helps my anxiety. But uh, I'm anxious thinking about it. But <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> as me, it's bad at it. I lose sleep. <laughs> my pal's like, okay, a wee joint, a wee wad's get on. It'll, it'll, like, you'll be fine. And I'm, I'm not stop thinking about it, man. Like, <laughs> What if I have a heart attack? What if I panic? What if I freak out? What if he puts like eckies or something in my joint? Like, but um, aye. So that's that's an end of tour thing. But I think drink wise, mate, I'm probably done with drink. Aye, I'm probably done, mate. I'm probably just 
because I just want to keep um, the panels the next thing. Mm-hmm. Do you yeah. miss it though? Does it bother <clears> you <throat> no, that you're not drinking? I don't miss it, no. no. I'm gigging fucking Friday <clears throat> and Saturday anyway. Aye. Sunday is my day with the Waynes. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do that to them, mate. Aye. And I couldn't take my Waynes out hungover. They'd fucking Aye. terrorise me. <laughs> no, they would, mate. They'd bully fuck at me. <laughs> what I mean? Uh, it's, the, it's not even fit. I, I don't know, like, Ashley, like, I'm, I'm like, I don't know how she did it. Mm-hmm. Like she'd get hang on, she'd get up in the morning and deal with the veins. I'm like, she's a fucking superhuman. Aye. Fucking happy at International Women's Day, Ashley. Aye. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't. When I've got high over me, I just want to lie in my bed and greet. <laughs> Have cry wanks, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get up fucking and be a human, you know what I mean? I sleep till Tuesday. I might wake up Tuesday and go, right, I'm ready for the world again. Aye, like, like, so cool. it, you're, you're missing too much, mate. L- life's too short. Mm-hmm. I'm no good with alcohol, mate. I'm fucking wrecked and I'm, I'm out for days. Aye. It's not good, mate. It's not Aye. good for you. And I take mm-hmm. it, Ashley must be massive for you as well mm-hmm. in the background because she is obviously a massive support for you and people probably don't realise that you need that. You, mm-hmm. need, you need something in your corner all the time when you're out and you're doing all these different things constantly. I, think, I, I need bear, mate, <clears throat> Ashley, because I've no go, like, I'm out with Raymond tonight, Raymond's my pal and I've got pals, but I've no got proper relationships with people Aye. other than Ashley. Mm-hmm. So that's how now this year I'm like, right, I need to start spending time with Raymond, I need to start spending time with Paul and mm-hmm. Chrissy. Because I want to have friendships, mate. Aye. I need I need people around about me. Aye. Other than my team. Aye. Which are great and I, and I love them and appreciate them. Mm-hmm. But outside working hours, they've all got their own pals and stuff. Aye. So a big thing this year is like, I want to spend quality time with my pals. Mm-hmm. No sitting on a phone. Fucking. Aye. So I, Ashley's great, but it's it's good to have other people or not. When and this I've, goes I've out, there's going to be fucking no end of people. I'll, 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 I'll hang about you, mate. Not a problem. Maybe, maybe you're a wee guy or a wee lassie or whatever the fuck you're watching, mate. Right? And you go to a park. Aye. No, as an adult. <laughs> when you go to <laughs> play with me. <laughs> Somebody will mention my van again, man. Like, but uh, imagine, imagine, like, that's what it was like, man. You're a wee guy. You walk up to a wee guy, you're like, I'll be pals. I'll get a ball away. I'll go get a game. Aye, but can't do that to Raymond. That's how I met Raymond in the pub. Like, why like, play me? He's like, okay, fuck me. And I date my missus. <laughs> Someone under that coin. Like, why play with me? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck that's why I can't drink. Mate, up to guys in the pub like that. Why play with me? <laughs> Get yourself to fuck me, man. Like <laughs> Raymond's a security guard, mate. A bouncer. That's how I met him. Threw us at the pub. <laughs> but I, it's just I want to, I want to have good friendships. That's a big Aye. thing. That's like a, a me thing that I need to focus on. Mm-hmm. Read more books. Look after myself a bit better. Like I'm not, I'm no, I'm not daft, mate. Aye. I'm not training for a fucking. I say that my PT, mate. I'm not here to train for a marathon. No. Don't bust my shots, man. Aye. Just let me come in on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I'll pick up the eating and stuff. So Aye. he's like, fuck it, it's your money, mate. Do what you want. Aye. I'll train you and he'll guide me, but I just want to have a healthier lifestyle, mm-hmm. not just on fucking eating vegetables, but Aye. healthier relationships, mm-hmm. like healthier fucking choices and stuff. So that's the big thing, Marisha. Fair play. Year. What's the plans future wise when the tour's done? Panto. Aye. No, I've auditioned for one panto, and I'm auditioning for a second one on Thursday. Mm hmm. So that's that's kind of how I like look a bit better. In odd case, if I had a dress on, it's not. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, I've got the legs, but I've just got the fucking muffin top, and you get a do you know what I mean? <laughs> that's good though. Is that something you just always wanted to do? Pal, uh, have you? I was a kind of improv comedian. That's right. how when I get heckled and or I can do videos. Just I, when I do a video, mate, I sit and what press play. I think what I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. I'll be driving along the road and I'll hear something they do like, "Oh, fucking bees are coming back now." I'll just pull the motor, fire a video, and just talk about bees, right. random as fuck. That's cause of the improv kindness behind Aye. me. But Pant will be amazing. Pant was always my big goal. Mm-hmm. Bigger than Amadillo. Pant was ahead Aye. of him. Aye. So we've got two additions with two good theatres. Right. Um, so hopefully oh, I've had one. Next one's on Thursday. Mm-hmm. For a bigger theatre. Right. So if I get at me, I'll be buzzing at my tits. That's brilliant. And then Australia next year, definitely. What's the plans in Australia? Uh, go and do a show in Perth and my Adelaide. Nice. I'll be for the festivals. Aye. Just like two solo shows as a holiday. Brilliant. Um, that's it that's amazing mm-hmm. you're definitely going to run into trouble in Australia aren't you oh imagine uh, me tarantula like, something in your room first night <laughs> <laughs> buying a rattlesnake <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a few questions in for people mm-hmm. a few that I had to just be like no I'm not asking I'm not right. fucking <laughs> hell man can moan um, somebody wants to know when you get your bins taken out what day of the week your bins get taken out I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to piss a lot of people off here, right? But we just fill our bins and for a wee guy to come and take it away. <laughs> wee guy's like 30 quid, turns up to my dodgy van. Right? 
And then there's a cycling push, man. We're all going to die anyway. What are you worrying about? We're all going to die in a fucking gigantic ball of fire. Like, I don't know. Every day, mate. Every, any day I want, Bins guy, 30 quid. I'm going to go back and blow this guy's mind like that. Even, Every day he gets his Bins even, taken out. Even before, even before the fame, man, I was a 30 quid a month bin guy. Fill all the bins. Like, just take it. Phone the wee guy, man, turns up, bogging as fuck, stinking a bin juice. He's like, I've emptied your bins. I've emptied your bins, man. Like, like humming a bin juice to wee guy, man. Like, fuck me, I don't want to sit in his van. Like, I've sat in some bogging murky vans, man, as wee, as wee bin juice guys. So, that's actually the my phone, the bin juice guy. Like, stinks a bin juice. I'm like, fucking, wee guys need sense of smell. Probably doesn't have ashy sods, mate. Probably goes and gets a McDonald's. Oh. His nuggets, wee bin juice fingers. But, Guys like that are about different, mate. He he's no scared of binges. Like, I gag, mate. I gag it if I want to take my bins out. The binges has not formed yet, you know what I mean? I'm hitting the boat. I'm hitting the boat, man. I'm like, make sure you wash the plastic. We wash the plastic, no for the e- eco. Aye. We wash it so the boat's no stinky and it doesn't make the binges worse. <laughs> but so 30 quid, eating, eating away for you. Or your, your, your roots for your grow, your fucking bodies, anything, man. <laughs> Compost, you don't want anything about it. Like, 30 quid. Uh, uh, 30 quid. For, uh, guy takes anything away, man. Your mother in law, everything, man. 30 quid. <laughs> Door goes like that, it's for you to take you uh, away. Guy's, a, guy's just a legend, man. But I, so I think it's like every. Uh, fuck, fuck knows where the council now, mate. Like, fuck. How can they put council tax up? <laughs> They're robbing bastards, mate. They put the council tax up, make the bin days less. That's how we've got a 30 quid guy. Like, I want to sit there with the council, like, what fucking day's my bin day? I've not got a Scooby. We've got a big bin because we've got hundreds of wins. So we applied for a bin, we got a bigger bin. It's just every cut the streets heavy jealous, man. Like, how did you get fucking, <laughs> how did you get half a biff a bin? That's what it's like. It's a big green, probably about a 10,000 litre or something. I don't know what litres it is, but it's like, it's my bin. Like, see if I go it, mate, Aye. and that bin's no there. And there's some cunt else a big bin, I'll be like, that's my fucking bin. Like, you need to write, you need to get a number on that, my street. You need to get a number, mate, your bin's gone. You've got the biggest bin and the bin oh, juice guy. Dick, mate. There's a wee guy, cuts a bit. You see him rolling bins about? Like, it's fucking, we know who the, the bin thief is. <laughs> but touches my bin, mate, he'll be caught out. People phone me like that, mate. You're on the country street with the big bin. There's a wee guy stealing your bin. Like, I'll catch him. But I, 30 quid guy. You like his number, just message my comedy Probably page. him that's messy, he's asking about the fucking bin Probably days. is, mate. I, mate, guy must be loaded, mate. Like, he's got a Rolex on that one, stinking the bin juice. <laughs> <laughs> that Pepsi, know what I mean? So I <laughs> Guys, I'm all you there. I'm, I'm not talking about a can of Pepsi, I'm talking about a Rolex Pepsi, and it's not a Turkish number, mate. Fucking Libertons. Oh, fucking. High man. heels. Fucking a Rolex. <laughs> guys packing. And it is, I, I thought about it, man. I thought, see if I could handle bin juice, mate. I could totally handle 30 quid a bin, man. I couldn't. Eh? Couldn't do um, it. It drips out the back of the van and all. See if, you, see if the van stops for too long. Oh. There's a wee bin juice puddle just coming out the back. But I bet your house is immaculate. I don't even want to know what it is for the stuff. Me and Ash have spoke about this. Right. I'd be like, I wonder what his house is like. Because he works with bins all day. Bet his house is spotless, man. Do you think? Aye. Either that or he's like a mad holder. And he's right. just I mean, the van's, bags. the van's no hanging. They're a decent van. It's Aye. just it's just leaking fucking bin juice everywhere. Aye. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I answered that, mate. I know, so, mate. That's, that opened that up was a on whole, my new, man. whole new realm I'm there. I'm so angry, man. Fucking council tax. Bin, bin juice guy. <laughs> the council. Any bizarre stories from when you've been out doing your apprenticeship and that out on the job? <clears throat> in Glasgow, yeah, yeah, yeah. surely there must be. Try, try not to tell my material, but I, I went to, so my old tradesman, my, my second tradesman, sorry, rule was never eat in a manky house. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I qualified, that rule went to fuck. Because <laughs> what, what they don't want you to do is, I, I grew up in a manky house, mate. I, like, I don't see them, I'm, I'm I just see a house, mate. Aye. House is a house to me, you're a hoarder, you're a hoarder, don't give a fuck, mate. I'm there to do a job. And if you offer me something, mate, I'm eating it. You know what I, mean? I, I would eat a dick with tomato sauce. <laughs> it, it, like, I don't care how the style your house is, mate. Because I grew up in a manky house. And my, my ma's food. My, my ma's no last air fryer, mate, about fucking five years. <laughs> my ma's air fryer's no a deep pan fryer, you know what I mean? Is that much grease in it? Just doesn't it clean it, man. Just, it just fills with grease. And then when it gets to the tap, it's done in the bin by a new air fryer. Um, but as we get, my, my old, my second judgment, sorry, said to me, never eat in a manky house. Mm-hmm. And I qualified, and I'm in this wee house. There's a wee addict kind of guy, and uh, he was making bacon. And I'm servicing the boiler next to him, and I'm looking at the bacon, get fried, man. I'm like, just did that wee fat guy thing. We are like, oh, what are you making, mate? Can I try to say, what Aye. bacon sort of is? It's first, first job in the morning. And he's like, bacon, you know, I had bacon before, big man. And I'm like, I've never had bacon in my life before. Is it nice? Just to try. 
and, and he made us a piece of bacon, mate. I'm eating a piece of bacon with this wee guy, and I look at man, I see the dog shouting the flare. <laughs> and I said to the wee dude, mate, your dog's shouting that flare. And he's like, ah, I've not got a dog. <laughs> and I was just, my tradesman voice <laughs> ringing in the back of my head, man. But I, I've had people like, people give you a teacup and it's bogging. No, and then I went with my guy one day, mm-hmm. and I was like, no, I was like, oh, mate, that's dirty. Because I, I wanted the tea. Aye. And, and he's like, no, mate, I don't wash my teacups. I'm like, how the fuck you talk about it? He's like, it was like a residue. See, right. like, see like, remember buckets? Aye. Yeah, you done a bucket and it was like that brown residue. Aye, the bottom? Aye, he's like, it tastes better <clears throat> if you don't wash it. And I'm, I'm drinking it like, I don't know if they got his bamboos up or no. <laughs> but uh, looked my, my boss, I let go. I locked him in a portal. The boys convinced me to lock him in a portal once. Uh, it says it like, God, he likes a bant on that. And I locked him in the portal, man. The guy was gone scatty. <laughs> This guy, the guy who owns the company. How long was he in it for? Uh, only about 40 minutes. <laughs> but it was fucking... <laughs> it was one of the portalos, man, that burnt their nostrils. <laughs> like, I'd never cleaned in years, man. Just pure steel pish and shit. <laughs> fucking uh, only 40 uh, minutes. It was, it was the, the tradesmen. They were just... Uh, cram colourable as fuck, mate. Then the tradesmen are like, oh, go and lock him in. I love it. No, that big man. Don't be a shite bag. And I'm running up the padlock, man. Fuck you. And uh, I can still hear his wee voice like, oh, I still talk to James. You know what I mean? He's like, oh, yeah, wee bastard. Open his door. You know, it was me because I was giggling and running away. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm in, uh, I'm in the job. This is when I was doing the Spark King. And I, I was in the job just helping, just labouring, pulling the wire through. And uh, the guy's like, where's James? And I'm like, I locked him in the portal. I'm still laughing. And the guy's like, you have your fucking head, mate. We're kidding you on. And I'm like, oh, no, man. And I went, nope, to me, he wasn't happy. Said they couldn't smell for days. <laughs> <laughs> he was the police, man. Even when he opened the door, man, it was like the Bingus guy, man. Even the Bingus guy couldn't handle that portal. <laughs> it was fucking stale as fuck. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> but I got locked under the, they put me under a flare board once in Edinburgh and they hammered the fucking... What, just like a tight space? And I was under the crawling under the oh, flare, so I had Dennis Barking pulling that. wire through and uh, they hammered the... What'd you call it? The board? Aye. Hammered the board down, mate. Man, got lunch and left me under the flare for it fucking, I know. But stuff like that, man. I was just getting bullied, man. Were you freaking out? Oh, terrorised. Uh, I couldn't, mate. I just pure frozen with fear. I had a full battery in my phone anyway, so... I was just lying under there like a fucking ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I was shouting, mate, at one point. I was like, help! <laughs> Hello? James! And uh, the customer's like, ah, Hello? Because <laughs> she couldn't see anybody. And then I'm like, fuck, I better not talk. <laughs> Because <laughs> he'd get in trouble, like the customer would be like, ah, it's fucking terrible. And I'm like, oh, I better not see it in case they'll kick fuck it. It's like, so I'm just pure quiet. And she's like, ah, can, I, can I hear somebody? Hello? Because <laughs> I'm shouting. <laughs> but, uh, spirits in the house. Oh, wait, imagine I said to the, I'm under, look under this flare, man. Imagine who's went fire or something. <laughs> fucking mental, mate. But, oh, uh, I love the health and safety here. Oh, Outstanding. Um, somebody had asked if you're going to do any more prison gigs. I know I'm you've done the prison before. gig. I've done Berlin this year. Uh, it wasn't really a gig, man, this year. It's funny because of COVID. I went in the rec call and just played speed pool with the dudes. Know what speed pool is? No. So I, in the jail, mate, they have, they have two pool tables and they put a ball in each pocket. Right. And then both tables have a guy each in the race. Right. And they, as they're doing it, people commentate on it. <laughs> so you just put, it's like, it's like fucking UFC, but the pool juice. <laughs> and you just slot a fuck it to two wee guys. So that's good, man. I love video gigs. They, People have a, a unpopular opinion as such in it, but they when you when they get a normally when you get a gig at the jail, mm-hmm. it's on a good behaviour order. So if they've right. behaved for three or four months, they get a curry. They get a curry anyway Aye. on a Friday, whatever it is. But they get a curry in comedy night. Mm-hmm. So it, either prisoners either been punished or in a fucking jail away for a family, and rightly so, they've done something right, right probably, unless they're the one percent that's innocent. But they. If they're b- good behaved for so long, they're on a like, kind of like a like a score sheet. Mm-hmm. They they get a gig and they get a munch. Right. So it's it creates good behaviour, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Y- you're making the, the screw the prison officer's life better, mm-hmm. and and they're being better right. to get a reward. So it's it's a nice wee bit of conditioning. They might go to jail and and enjoy that and mm-hmm. think I'm going to work hard and not that I would do that in my gigs, but they're good, mate. The must be a good part. Aye, mental mate, Billy is brilliant. And they're the best gigs ever. Aye. You've got 200, like Berlin, you've got about 200 guys in the gig, sober as fuck, Aye. buzzing to see you. Like, you try mm-hmm. material in there, mate. If it doesn't land, you're shite. Aye. If, it, if the material doesn't land, sorry, it's shite material. Aye. You're doing it in front of 200 sober guys. If it lands and it gets a big laugh, you're like, fuck me. Aye. What's that going to be like when I do it in Armadillo to 3,000 Stephen people? Aye. Different fear, but when you get heckled down there and it's a fucking oh, psychopath. You're getting shafted, <laughs> didn't you? You're getting fucking <laughs> you get pumped, man. <laughs> 
But uh, I, the, uh, I'll not tell the story, man. I don't want to get fucking shot. There's a, uh, there's a story, man. Can I say that? And then can't just me, don't I say can't it. Tell it. The dude's like a heavy glazer gangster. I can't do it. I'll get popped. So there was a, a scenario happened, and I went in the jail. It was in the digger. This situation, right? <laughs> And I went in the jail and told the story I read in the digger and the fucking dude that was about was in the gig. <laughs> and it was the only dude that I'd seen no laughing. And then the prison officer Vinny says me after he went, You know who that Vinny's like the main guy, buddy. Right. Um he's like, You know that guy was in the gig, wouldn't you? And I spent months like, Oh my god, man, this dude's gonna pop me. I'm like it was funny as fuck, but it was a good laugh, you <laughs> know what I mean? Every cup was laughing because he was there. I'm afraid they're laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just I'm leaving I'm scared to see his name, man. No, we'll, we'll, oh. we'll, we'll leave it there. Aye. We'll leave it there. But I'll do the jail gigs anytime. That would be class. Right, it's a good gigs, mate. Just, it's a gig, it's a gig, mate. Aye. Like, 100%. They behave, they get a reward. Anywhere that you've no played yet, like venue wise, that you'd love to? Like, you'll be Stornoway places. Love mm-hmm. to go up to Stornoway. Uh, Belfast, we're doing for the first time. I've That'll kicked in good. Belfast, a comedy club, but my Aye. first time a solo show. Uh, but I like Stornoway, the islands, and like Barron or that, I love to do all them. Mm-hmm. I like sailing, mate, so I love to go sailing Aye. and do like wee sailing gigs. Remember Connolly done the thing when he travelled over Scotland? Aye. And the trike, and he done like comedy, and then visiting Aye. your local town. I love to do that, but on a modern scale. You and Paul could do that and just film the whole thing. Aye, I love to do it, mate. That was the plan a couple of years ago. My pal's got a yacht, so I'll just give him the money, like almost like a rent. Aye. And he takes me out, I pay for the fuel and the food, mm-hmm. and a wee bit of rent to help him Aye. fix his boat. It's not a like fancy yacht, it's not like a normal fucking probably a 25 grand job. But we just go for a week at a time. We've done it this year because the season's just about to kick Aye. in. But it was good that we spoke about it. He's like, Man, I did that in the border. That'd be oh, fucking brilliant. That would be amazing. Let's all the wee islands get a wee bit of tourism and all. Aye. See, like Aaron and stuff, they're mm-hmm. all brilliant. The islands, Rossi, fucking great places. Just get the Gary Falls t shirt back. Set my white t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck's this week? Where's <laughs> 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 that Beyonce? <laughs> 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 Um, somebody asked the, well it's a kind of double question worst gig you've ever done and the worst job you've ever had uh, worst job fuck me uh, working for Isha in Cadogan Street right that was just like call centre everybody was a cunt man like <laughs> the bosses were cunts the customers were cunts like <laughs> It was the most horrific experience of my life, man. You selling stuff or what was the uh, car insurance right. inbound, mate? Complaints. Right. Um, I six weeks I just fucking just get pounded and then we've been out. We've, we've done the job, mate. And I think I lasted two hours. <laughs> they called me a fat cunt on the phone. And I was like, "How do you know I'm fat?" He's like, "I can just tell." And I was like, "This guy's right, man." Like <laughs> two hours of people getting right in my head. <laughs> know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I was wild to me. See people at working call centres, mate. They're a, they're a different breed, man. Aye. They're solid. Aye. They're, they're mentally, the you take. Aye, they're mentally stable, mate. They're f- These people could go and do high pressure jobs, no bother. Aye. See, like astronauts and that. They, sh- mm-hmm. they should just recruit call centre staff. Aye, front line. Like, see NASA should be down to Cadogan Street. Like you handle pressure. <laughs> space station, hurry up, <laughs> up to the space station. It's just one of the jobs, mate. But you, you need to be built different. Aye. I'm very fragile. Mm-hmm. Like no my heckles, alright, but. People just shouting and negative, mate. Oh, they killed me, man. Right. The woman at Tots is alright, but the bosses and that, you just, you, I just, six weeks of training and I lasted two hours in right. actual job. The, you you could just tell the environment. There was like timing you to go and do a shite. Right. Like, I want flexi time when I do a shite. <laughs> I, I don't want, I don't want a timer, you know what I mean? Don't want to be on the clock. I, I want, I don't want to be on the clock. I want to clock in, clock out. I want to have a comfortable shite. Check, make sure the world's alright. Twitter, like fucking. Do you know what I've always wondered about that? How do they know what an average time is? There's got to be a professional shiter. <laughs> they must base it on an average. It's like the binge guy, there's just I a know, gig out there for... Who, who the fuck the timing? That's what I mean. Like, how do they get an average time off somebody uh, doing a shit? Like, you've done a, an eight minute shite, are you alright? <laughs> <laughs> like, nobody was trying to buff you last night, man. Fucking <laughs> Beijing banquet is brutal. Sometimes I do a shite and I've not finished completely and I've got another wee shite coming, like... <laughs> know what I mean? Not top it. You do a shite for you, like, you should get the front door and you're like, ah, fuck, I wouldn't do another shite. Aye, it's still... You missed a bit, but um, <laughs> or you get an extra arsehole, no way up to your street. Like, imagine you work in a call centre, no, no way up to your street, and you get an extra arsehole, but you're yeah, fucking you've, you've had used, your three minutes, you've used all your shite time. <laughs> <laughs> Must you get for the pee? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that kind of environment, mate, I just knew I wasn't going to like it. What about but, gig wise? What's the worst gig you've done? Worst gig, yeah, I don't think there's ever been a worst gig. 
I, I've the solo showed of him was tough, mate. But I would say that was the worst. Why? What was thinking about it? Just people were just wrecked. Just it was one of the first steaming. things back, mate. Everybody right. was wrecked. Like, like my support act was brilliant. Chrissy came off stage and he was like fucking jaded a wee bit. And I was like, fuck me, it's not gonna be, it's gonna be tough. Right. And it was tough, but people were all right, man. But the worst gig I probably think at the comedy clubs. Um, when have I died in my hole? London. I went down done the comedy store in London. And I came off the stage, mate. I'd done it as the King Gong. Mm -hmm. So you get two minutes grace, mate. I'd, I'd done about fucking 30 seconds, mate. The Gong is off. Right. And the compere came on and we were like, ah, I don't have an English guy. He's like, I don't have a clue what that fucking German guy just says. <laughs> like, genuinely thought of German. <laughs> People thought to me, like, ah, where is in Germany? Are you from? And I'm like, Glasgow. <laughs> Germany, pal. But they didn't even give me a grace, mate. It just fucked his right off. Fuck's sake, but I was man. brand new then. I went on stage like <laughs> fingers. I probably like the comedy store London, mate. Right. That's fucking that savage. That was a death, mate. That was a death beyond. And then you had the junglers as well. You would you would go there and you would just get fucking annihilated. Right. It would just be like rows and rows of workies, man. Just heckling you all the time. mate. And now I was too new to put my head above the parapet, man. Right. You just walk on stage and go hi, boo, and right back on stage, man. Just like. <laughs> I'm not getting bullied tonight, man. Like, it's just because you gig for nothing in comedy. So you're getting fucking dogs abused and ah, you're getting paid for it. It's stinking, man. But uh, gigs are alright. Gigs are always alright. I've done Yes Party, like three people had a brilliant gig. Mm. Look, fucking smashed it. Aye. That's my belly, man. <laughs> That's because my, my body's worried. <laughs> I'm going to get a job in a call centre. That's Body, the issue. memories flooding send, back. Sending me warning shots. Like, ah, don't you dare time me for a shite. <laughs> <laughs> um. But I mean, that's it. Do you think that's a right a passes over the comedy clubs? Because I suppose Definitely everybody's had to do it. Uh, yeah, right. It's just like an apprenticeship, in it? The apprenticeship, they come down for about six, seven years, probably, maybe more. Um, it just, it toughens you up, mate. It teaches you how to write a five minute set. Mm -hmm. You've got to gig to, you've got to gig to the crowd, mate. There's right. a lot of solo shows I go to and I'm like, right, it's name material the night. No. Or, I don't, like, there's, I, f I forgot to a gig and they're not drunk enough. Aye. And I've got to power through material. Mm -hmm. I've got to do around 20 minutes of material in 60 minutes. Aye. Uh, there's some gigs you go to, the crowd are lively, just, and on stage you call it. Mm -hmm. You just go right crowd work tonight. Aye. Or as little material as I can get. Mm -hmm. But you don't get that. You wouldn't have that understanding if you didn't do the club circuit. Aye. And you did, because when you go into a comedy club, if, if you're new and you do your five minute open spot to call mm -hmm. it, you hang back and you watch the headliner. Aye. And then you go and say to the headliner, like, oh, can you give me some advice? And mm -hmm. they'll say, oh, you're shite, don't do this again. <laughs> um, or they'll say, don't do that material again. Aye. Change it about, they'll give you advice. So it's how you learn. It's like any job. Aye. Comedy's no different to anything else. It's just a harsher learning experience, isn't harsher, it? Harsher, it's like some deaths, man. I've died in my whole hundreds of times when I first started. I think you're top getting bombed off and then getting caught Aye. a German. You get you get one laugh, man. One laugh and you're just like that's the, the euphoria I'm talking Aye. about. You get one laugh and you're just psyched up for the rest of the gig. Sometimes you get one laugh and then booed the fucking next five minutes. <laughs> but because you get one laugh, you're like, oh I, I, that was always my goal. My first gig was the state bar, mm -hmm. and I think I lasted a minute and twenty seven seconds. And I walked off the stage because just pure nerves like and um I think that's what it was. I got a few laughs. Right. And it's like the drug. It's Aye, like the it just keeps you going. Euphoria. Aye. Like you're always chasing that. So when I first started, like get one laugh, then get mm -hmm. two laughs, three laughs, four laughs, five laughs. And I just built up a really tight five minute set. Which is fuck, just going butter. Aye. Brilliant. Um any gigs you've been kinda scared today? Like venue wise or just Amadillo. seeing a crowd and went, fuck me, man. Amadillo was intimidating as fuck. I suppose when you're standing on the stage Aye. and looking out. 3,000 people, man, just fucking burn at you. <laughs> they, when we done it there, it was good. Aye. Because I was used to it, but the first time was just like alien. Aye. Like, because when you, when you gig in Amadillo, when people laugh, the laugh rolls down. Right. And then rolls back. And you've got to give it the laugh time to go away mm -hmm. before you kick in your next set. Mm -hmm. But the first time I'd done Amadillo, I was just jumping tappy everything. Right. And it I, it just seemed mental, the gig. Aye. And I came after, I was like, I didn't enjoy that, man. That was fucking scary. Um, but it's cause I wasn't letting the gig settle. But this year, I just Aye. you let people laugh, Aye. the laugh go up, let the laugh come back, mm -hmm. and then crack up in the next set. Brilliant, that's good. Last one, best bit of advice you've ever had? Uh, be yourself. Aye. Just be yourself. Be funny. Raymond Burns. I sat down with Raymond Burns. He's one of the best queens in Scotland, and I says, "Can you give me any advice?" Mm -hmm. I offered to pay him for his time, Aye. and he just sat down and went, 
just be fucking funny. Aye. Like, just be yourself, be funny. That's it, man. Just go and enjoy it. Your, your comedy's there to be enjoyed. Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's not like the gas, but you've got to... You've got to fix something or nah, you fucking blow the house up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you don't fix a boiler gas pipe, right? You're fucking taking it a block. Aye, aye. But the comedy, mate, it's a hobby. You're mm-hmm. there to enjoy yourself. So just I just be yourself, man. Just enjoy the process. Love it's it. fun in all aspects. Any tickets left for your remaining dates for him that it's I mean, other tickets left, still got tickets left. Mm-hmm. Um so go to garyfalls.co.uk. Mm-hmm. But we're in Edinburgh this weekend, don't know if she's gonna we've still got Sterling and stuff, so I come along and see me. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you, mate. I no, appreciate it. Having me. I appreciate I'll see that. You, hopefully see you in panel soon. Uh, you will, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe you will, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on your people start shouting at me. That's going to be a hangman. People are just going to be shouting out all the time. That's behind you. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, mate. I appreciate that. Brilliant.